Today, we find ourselves stuck in the middle of an almost barren, featureless desert in what I can only describe is a map and a game generated by my channel supporters that could have, for the first time, gone too far. We are playing Mongolia, TSL Mongolia, on Saf's Silk Road. It is the longest, stretchiest map you have ever seen. It goes right from the China, Indian, South Asian coast all the way to the west to where, what, well, passed into France, into Europe. A really, 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 really cool map. But we're playing Mongolia. It's A to Z. We need to build a railroad to Rome. That is the victory condition today. Can we build a railroad from our city through conquered territories to Rome? 22 TSL civilizations. We've got 17 city-states. We have everyone from Scythia, India, Persia, Babylon, Sumeria, Arabia, Phoenicia, Georgia, Ottomans, Byzantium, two Greeces, Macedonia, Hungary, and then Rome. And that's just the start of things. We've also got two versions of China to our right. Vietnam to our southeast, and nothing but desert. And it gets even better because we may be playing on deity today, but we are not playing on standard speed. We are playing on historic. This is a medieval era start. So we're jumping two eras ahead. Everybody is. We have everything up to the medieval era unlocked. And the game is effectively on marathon speed. Well, effectively the techs and the civics are on marathon speed with standard speed building. So you're going to see a lot of armies. The game is effectively locked to the medieval and renaissance eras. Our goal to take over everything until Europe and build a railroad from our capital to Rome. It would be Genghis Khan's ultimate victory, and it's going to be very, very difficult. Remember, if you have other crazy game challenges that you want to throw my way, channel supporters is where you want to go. Coffee, Patreon, they have been helping me to create every single game on the A to Z challenge list, and thank goodness, because there's a lot of sieves and I need the ideas. I've left the save file and all of the mods that you'll need to run this game in my Discord, so come along and have a look. And one of the mods, yeah, this makes it even more difficult. We are playing again with Civilizations Expanded, a mod that overhauls every sieve in the game and makes them better. Oh, Ursa, you've made Mongolia better. Surely that makes the game easier. No, 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 no. Every sieve. All 21 opponents have a buffed version of the original sieve. China, by the way, to my east, two versions of China, very, very tricky. Yeah, they get a great wall of China improvement that improves their science. They will be throwing walls up with 50 strength before we've even got our first horses out. Like, it is so difficult. So what tools do we have equipped to take on the world? Well, the Mongol horde will arrive again, and essentially the differences between regular Mongolia and this version of Mongolia is that you start the game with horses and iron visible. Well, that's pointless because we're starting the medieval era, so I have those techs available already. We do, however, get two extra production and one extra science, from strategic resources. That's horses and iron as well as nitre and everything that comes after that. That's really handy. That'll help us to crank out those first units. We get the rog uh, regular combat bonus. We get the chance to defeat enemy cavalry units and steal them. Siege and support units gain plus two movement when starting a turn adjacent to light cavalry or kashik. Now this is brilliant. This means our catapults can move at four speed if they're next to our horses. I cannot tell you how useful that's going to be because again, people throw up walls in historic era. There's nothing for cities to do but build walls. It's it's terrible. 100% production towards traders and sending a trader immediately starts a trading post. You know that. Trader routes gain one culture and one production for passing through trading posts in my cities. Basically, the more we conquer, the better our trade routes get. It's really fun. We get the usual diplomatic visibility level for having a trading post in a city, and we get the usual double combat bonus for having higher diplomatic visibility. I believe everything else is roughly the same, but I think our Ordu gives a little bit of immunity and culture boost as well. So it, it, it's a little bit of difference, but effectively the Mongolian strategy is still the same. Build horse, scream loudly, and charge, especially after you've traded with them. It's all about diplomatic visibility today. That's what we're going to be going for. Now, to start, look at this start. It is terrible. I'm going to tell you now, this start is so bad, I'm going to go looking for a better one. I was thinking, well, you know, maybe we could play TSL and start literally in the middle of a featureless desert, but we're playing the Mongols. We're on horses, right? We, we are travelers, so we're going to go and see if we can find things. Also, there are a couple of very fun starts around here. Follow me. We're going to send the first settler down and to the right, and this settler down and to the left. 
just just trust me on this one. This is this is a good start if we can uh, just walk a little bit. Oh look, what is this? A lot of horses to our left. Oh ho ho! And what's this? A natural wonder that gives general points and merchant points directly to ourself. Again, very nice indeed. Now, okay, don't get too excited, right? Yes, this is a very good start. I am not going to kid you. It's amazing. If you do a little bit of traveling. It is not unbeatable though. There are a lot of pitfalls here and we are going to struggle if we are not careful. Two horses down here as well. Excellent. This is exactly what we need. We have a choice, really. Which do I want my capital to be? I'm going to go for this city because it's got more things. Oh, this starts as a poor start. And then I'm going to have this as my second city. I'm going to get comments. Why have you got two settlers at the beginning? I'm playing on medieval start. I'd really recommend it, by the way. A lot of people I play or play with or talk to have only ever done ancient era starts. Really give it a go. The game is so much fun if you start a little bit later. Check out those horses, though. Two extra production and one extra science. Just for them existing. Oh, this is how we get back into the game. First of all, government. Melee, anti-cavalry and naval units. No, 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 no. We're going to be using cavalry and siege. So to do that, I'm going to go Classical Republic. I always want to go Classical Republic if I'm going for a domination-esque game because these amenities stack up very well later into the game. Secondly, Revelation. I want a religion. Religion is going to be really, really handy for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I could get Crusade and I want to get Crusade if I'm going to defeat China. China is almost unbeatable beginning of the game and we need all the help we can get. Secondly, feed the world, desert start. It makes sense. There is no chance of me getting the desert at Pantheon, by the way. The game is too far ahead. Like, I start with 20 faith, but there are a bunch of civs in this game that start with more faith per turn than that. But all of the Pantheons will be gone. Whatever I've got left in the game, I will be grateful for. But later into the game, we can get the Wars of Religion card as well, which gives us extra combat strength if somebody is a different religion to us. Oh, we will be using that. So Revelation to get our profit points. We're going to be getting Diplomatic League so that we can get two envoys at city-states instead of one. There are a lot of military city-states around us and we want to be friends with them. Trust me. I then also want to build districts up as quickly as possible. So urban planning is going to go in and harvest calendar, a lovely little two extra food that comes from the civilization's expanded mod. I might as well use it if I can. And so we go to make horses. Horses, 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 horses. And even better, a nice plus four holy site. I know there's a plus five there. I know, but I'm not spending that much gold early in the game. He says spending gold early in the game. Look, okay, this is a camper spot, so we'll, we'll leave that for later. I am going to use the trader immediately. It's going to be quite good, and you can see already that becomes a one food, two production, one culture trade route, because I have a trading post in that city. Now, the reason I did that is because if I want to use my capital, I want to relay my traders through my cities as much as possible. This is going to be really handy later. I'm also going to do some exploring, but I'm not going to go too far away from my land, because trust me, the barbs get mental on this map. They really do. Pingala. We're going straight into Pingala, into the capital. And I start with four governors because of the fact that we've started with one, two, three, four of these civics unlocked. And I'm going to go connoisseur, researcher, and grants. Double great people in this city. This is how we're going to get not only a religion, but hopefully an early game great general and an early game great merchant. Now, when it comes to great merchants, there is one we are particularly interested in, Mary Goddard. I don't know if she's going to come too late into the game, but if we can get plus one diplomatic visibility with all other civilizations, you bet I'm going to get that. <laughs> also, look at all this era score we've got. First to find a continent, first to settle near someone, first to get some era score. Yes, yes, yes. We, we want gold. Earth is going gold all game. What are we going to do in terms of tech? We find knights, we find kashiks, and we just press that button and just hope that the game will eventually take us to it. I also want to go towards monarchy because I want to unlock the chivalry card as soon as possible. That lets me build horses super quick. And civil service is quite good. Somebody might foolishly become my ally. You never know. See what I mean about China? 21 science already. All ready. China is not messing around this game. They really 
a knot. Now this archer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross this river and I'm going, I'm going to basically just go and lurk near China. I want to find all of their cities and I want to find all of the settling spaces I can get near their land. So you can see I'm the first person to get great general points and also merchant points and we've got some profit points coming in. Look, it's not the best. Oh, that's actually, that river's flooded a little bit. That's cool. This wonder start is not enough. Like, it's not enough. It's 196 turns before I get a general and the same before I get a great merchant. And the AI is going to be racking up 25, 30 points before that person gets taken. Like, I, yeah, deity, civilizations expanded, a huge map. It's going to go crazy. Like, I need to play this with every trick in the book if we're going to get this one done. Also, look at the crazy way the tiles have been formed in the city. That's really cool. I like that. It's like a upside down triangle. Oh, iron as well. Bam. That's a big production tile. Already, actually, we've got 20 production because we've got three strategic resources here. It's lovely. Actually, I'm just going to force work that tile uh, just for a little bit. It's annoying, but I do want the faith. And I'm keeping this spearman near my land. Like, barbs are just going to get crazy on this map. They really, really are. First holy site is done. That means I'm going to be getting four profit points per turn. Look, already people are up to three. Like, honestly, this game is going to get crazy. So I might just build a shrine quickly. Unless I want to sell China horses. Now, this is a deal with the devil. I want to take over China. But they're going to find horses regardless, okay? I want the gold. I want to be able to actually buy things. So that that deal with the devil, yes, I'm going to be strengthening them. But it means I can instantly build a shrine. And that means I can get a religion to send them crusade. It, they, look, honestly, they're going to find horses somewhere. So if I can get gold out of this transaction, I'll take this transaction, you know? Like, I am not worried about that. Next up, I'm going to just plop down an encampment. Again, I want the great people points. Look at that, 6.9. 6.9 profit points. It's not going to be enough, but it's definitely better than it was a little bit ago. Mashu Pishu built 13 turns into the game, honestly. Oh, there you go. Barbs. Told you. I told you. Barbs are crazy on this map. They really, really are. And I'm just going to take this tobacco quickly. China, you want this? Just... Honestly, you need to fuel me. China is going to pay for their own destruction by basically just buying everything from me here. Giant's Causeway. That'll come in handy a little bit later, but until that point, China will be making all of their troops stronger with it. So it's not really good for me. I, 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 like, I won't lie. It's terrible for me. Here a score vote from this beautiful holy site in this city now. Lovely. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and settle a couple times. Could be handy could be handy. I'm thinking about taking a couple of cities on this northern area to give me a bit of a staging point to attack China with. Although, is it too early to start sending horses out? Yes, because I really want my Ordu, my unique encampment building. It makes horses plus one movement and that will really come in handy later. So, okay, let's get the shrine first. Okay, I'm thinking of something a little bit crazy here. Petra. Could I get a Petra star? Imagine how good my capital would be with all of these desert hills around me. It's mighty tempting. It is mighty tempting. That would make my capital very powerful indeed. I could use my gold instead to buy the buildings in this city. Oh, you know, sometimes you just have to go for it. I'm already working two desert tiles, so and I'm, I'm settled on one as well. So that would give me six food, six gold and three production already. Sometimes you just have to burn yourself by flying too close to the sun. That's what I say. Oh, that's a barb swordsman. That's no fun. Okay, 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 okay. Do you see what happened there? The game was like, oh, oh, Ursa wants to have some fun. Okay, okay, what what, what can we do to ruin this party? There is Scythia, my first target when I start heading west. Do you want some horses? They normally do. Yeah, they really do. Oh, that's a big amount of gold there. Okay, I'm actually going to not buy a horse. I'm going to buy an archer. I think an archer will be enough just sat in this encampment attacking to help me kill the barbs. That'll be good. Also, can we have open borders, please? I want to go and, like, snoop in your land and find all your cities. Thank you. What? Another one? No. No, 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 no. That's not fair. That's not fair at all. What pantheons have we got? Uh, not very good pantheons at all. You see what I meant? Like, honestly, just nothing ever happens on this map. The AI is so far ahead of you. I really, really wanted the extra faith in production from strategic 
strategic resources. Oh my lord, that would have been handy. Never mind. Let's go for something a little bit different. God of War. That sounds like something that I would do. Mwahaha. <laughs> Bonus faith equal to 50% of the strength of each combat unit killed within eight tiles of a holy site district. I'm going to be building holy site districts, but don't forget, it actually counts as any holy site district. It's, the, it's worded badly. It even includes enemy districts. It's really, really handy. Oh, another swordsman. That's three. That's three separate swordsmen. Okay, that's not fun. I'm gonna have to buy another archer. Oh, terrible, terrible. And this spearman is being chased and chased. I might actually be able to lure them into the desert. I don't want to lose my trader, but that's not the worst outcome here. Okay, they have moved one unit into my land. That's a bit annoying but we can hit it they're going to unfortunately pillage the horse but they might suffer from some indecision and move somewhere else i don't know we'll, we'll see but hopefully yeah my, my, my spearman is still leading them on a very merry chase i've got a horseman being built in this city like i want petra if i can get petra this will all be worth it smirkand i'm gonna leave them one envoy yep that'll just get me a little bit more gold per turn lovely i might get lucky they may attack me oh no they pillaged it of course but there's another swordsman oh i can just see the comments now ursa why did you leave the barbarians to get out of hand it's like i didn't i was literally stood right next to them and they attacked me oh it absolutely pains me to do it but if i don't put ancient walls in this is going to become a problem look i'm, I'm not too worried Barbs will never kill your city. They're just going to make it problematic. But I don't want to fall too behind just purely because the barbs are assaulting me so aggressively. So we'll, we'll, we'll play this one a little bit more carefully. Okay, well, these swordsmen are at least being distracted i guess is the proper term for this i mean ideally i don't want them coming all the way to the city but that's exactly what i'm gonna end up doing accidentally uh there is my tobacco that's been pillaged but i'd already sold it i believe so that's okay okay good this spearman has managed i think to outrun the barbarians oh no don't you dare you desert storm oh thank god it pieces out i was like if you start pillaging things on top of it i'm not gonna be happy oh the swordsman's gone straight for my other horse oh that's painful this was like my entire economy was just selling horses <laughs> and i know i know i need my own horses i need to actually get those sorted i get it but there's only so much i can do at any one time this is what i mean about the great walls look oh all units sat on them become fortified immediately it's so difficult to kill china it's exactly what we're going to try and do but my lord is it going to be tough i am really grateful for the fact that i set my holy site up on the other side of the city that's a good thing we got the first kill 17 faith just let it chalk up we're gonna need a lot of faith because we're probably gonna have to buy a couple of either missionaries or great people one of the two so there's kabul perfect i can put two envoys there and suzerain it immediately okay i'm producing units a little quicker now in my capital and just as excitingly we found lahore as well just to the south india is behind it we haven't met india yet but we will okay this horseman my first horse to be completed there is going to be a huge barbarian problem here but if i just hold this side of the river i should be able to provide a distraction without having to actually do too much and i've got my builder coming out to already start fixing my capital good 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 back on track let's get this wall up in this city i mean oh no no i'm gonna just gamble i need to expand quickly let's go for the settler six turn settle and i can go and settle in this area and that means i can put a trader down send it to china really quickly this game is all about speed the barbs are bad but it's a gamble if i can just hold on use the absolute minimum absolute minimum to defeat china with then i should or the barbs with i should say i should leave myself more room oh look they're attacking the walls that's good that's a really good thing because it's a stupid thing to do it's really stupid okay there's one more kill there that's good and we're dealing some serious damage now oh 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 no one's home no one's home okay quick horses da, 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 da. Right, you can get within range there i can bring units to distract this swordsman this is fine oh someone's getting 12 profit points per turn already this is what i mean the ai does not mess around on this map they really don't world congress already i would love it if we can do city center buildings faster 
look, there's 22 people. If I vote down, it's not going to go through. People will always vote for A, and I might as well just do something that, you know, walls are going to be put up regardless. I can't assume they're not going to be up, so we just might as well lean into it. A militaristic city-state trade routes. I found two of those on the map already. Maybe there's more. Yeah, okay, perfect. So we actually got two uh, diplomatic uh, score there, which is pretty cool. Awesome. We're in the joint lead. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, and attack. Look at that. Oh, we killed the encampment. I'm hoping that's going to be the last time we have anything that disgusting right outside our borders, but we'll see. So this horse, now that the barbs have been defeated, is going to make its way east, and I'm going to prepare the way so that we can start to get this settler out. Ah, oh, you see what I mean about barbs? It's all this open desert. It really, really is a nightmare to defend. Oh my god, two scouts! One disappeared. Like, no joke, that is not the same scout as the one that found me earlier. There's one encampment. Okay, right. I'm going to actually have to send my defense in that area already. This is ridiculous. But I think the scouts are not going to attack my settler because I haven't defeated the encampment yet. So we're okay for now. So selling horses has given me enough gold for a temple. That's another 2.3 great people i think we, we want the first prophet we really really want the first prophet like if we can pick up feed the world and if we can pick up crusade these cities are going to become industrious very quickly oh i really really wanted to buy that tile but i can't afford to no no i'm gonna have to wait okay that's fine i was like thinking if i can get that tobacco i could probably sell it for more than i'm buying it for but maybe i should just wait that's Kublai, by the way. The other half of China. Again, look at that. 48, 47. Neither of those Chinas are messing around. They are absolutely on it. And again, I know, I know I'd rather not be selling them all of these strategics, but quite honestly, my economy needs it. This is the only way I'm going to survive quite a bit of this stuff. Persia. Hello. Wanted to meet you. Yes, yes, yes. It's all good. Would you like any of my things? I'm selling. I'm selling a lot of stuff right now. And here, by the way, is my Ordu. Yay! Okay, my capital can now make me horses and cavalry a little bit faster. We'll take it. We will take any victory we can get here. Oh, barbs are coming. Get in the sea. Get in the sea. By the way, if after all of these barbarians, I don't get Petra, I might cry. Just just a little. Just, just to warn the game. I'm just putting it out there. Um... To be fair, that actually might be a good thing for the game. I, I like to think of Civ, the AI, as being quite, you know, malicious, deliberately cruel. Seems to fit anyway. Sell it all. Sell it all. So I'm still on course to get one great general. That is good. The Prophet, I am nip and tuck with this other person getting a very similar amount. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to probably just faith dump in order to get this. All run a couple of holy site projects, which I really didn't want to do, because I do want to actually get on building cavalry. Not cavalry, horses. Light cavalry. You know what I mean. It's all the same, really. Oh my god, an actual tribal village. That's the first. That's the first I found all game. There have been hardly any. What I'm doing with my archer is I'm just very briefly nipping over to this side of the map. I want to be the first person to circumnavigate the map. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, they're probably going to settle next turn. If they do, it's fine. I'll go and settle to the north. It's just going to be more annoying. Like, don't forget, on domination maps, if people beat you to the punchline, it's okay because you're just going to end up taking the cities later anyway. So, you know, you, you, you will win it eventually. Also, look at that. Plus one envoy means that I get an extra production. Every city with a barracks or stable, that includes my unique thing and in my capital as well. So very soon I'm going to be able to pump out these horses. Anyone want tobacco? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Oh, yes. And I yes, I will have some sugar. Lovely. Us is always down for a bit of sugar. Mmm. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Do it, do it, do it, do it. No. Oh, that saddled over that. That's really annoying. They've taken all of that rice. Oh, and there's drought that's just knocked out the plantation I put down. Doesn't matter. I have Petra. I'm really hoping this gamble pays off. I have a few desert tiles that I'm already working. If I can get this Pingala city to like 10 population, oh my lord. I'll be able to put commercial hubs down. I'll get science. I'll get culture. Oh, yeah, just go away. Look, China, look. I, I built it, okay? This is what I did. Oh, yeah, already. Already that's looking like a good city. All right. What are my options? I could get Holy Sight Prayers to boost my religion. That would get me the first religion. After that point, then I could build horses. 
I really want the religion. I really want Feed the World. I've already got temples pretty much in both cities. So it would it would be hugely beneficial. Oh, I'm just going to do it. Like, I, I'm going to regret not just... Sometimes I, I get too distracted and I get multiple different ideas for, like, tactics. And I, I get sort of split between. But really, if I just commit, this should be fine. Like, a little bit of a flanking attack there. And there's the barb camp destroyed beautiful now again i can still settle up the coast uh to the uh, north what i'm doing is basically putting a city that i can get a trade route sorted with a single trade route puts a trading post into china and suddenly i've got plus six combat strength against them it's beautiful it is the mongolia way another barb encampment to my left keep an eye on it it might get spicy arabia hello and i believe that is india as well honor to meet both of you beautiful oh yes and luxuries okay i like to buy my luxuries with straight up gold because then you know i know how much i've got coming in and out it's just a little easier for me do people want to be friendly with me you know what if anyone wants to be mongolia's friend like i am taking that yeah perfect 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 lots of friendships what we can do is actually get a military alliance with somebody that's met china and wants a joint war it's quite a difficult thing to achieve but if we can that'll be pretty cool i'm gonna go and settle on the maze thinking about it it'll give that city a little bit of extra gold per turn and i like that okay time to get this encampment down beautiful it was very tempting to put the government plaza but i think the encampment is the one i want it's the one that i want also gems perfect who wants to buy them? 26 gold per turn. Yet you see, look, this is why we go into business with India. Gandhi, Gandhi knows a good time. Oh, actually, what I will do very briefly before I get the encampment is just pick up a trader. I've got 100% production towards it. and I can go and send the trade route to China almost immediately, which would be very handy. This will count as an aggressive settle. I don't mind. It's fine. It's all that I ever wanted. And yes, I absolutely am going to just build an encampment to start off in this city. Uh, you know, after I build ancient walls. I don't trust China not to rush me. It's what I would do, admittedly. So, you know, I can't expect them to have better standards than I would hold myself to. Well, this map has really weird tiles that kind of fall off the edge. Like, normally you don't see those tiles uh, there. I'm not actually planning on doing any more settling. So I'm going to take, hopefully, two batches of 30 diplomatic favour as they both protest. Yes, lovely. That gives me 60 favor and i can sell that almost immediately no point hanging around i could keep it for the world congress but when you're being offered deals like that oh that's really good i don't want to trade with the china's boat because i might end up killing them he says looking very very guilty that just gave me 20 extra profit points and it's just building my advantage this is fine this is fine i just want the religion that's all i want i just want the religion so I can't get the trader across the river. So yeah, putting this city here was a very good option for me. I like that. Well, I forgot to mention at the time, but because this is the medieval era start, all the cities come with monuments. That's really nice, isn't it? It's a good thing, by the way, that we are rushing this because this person has gone to 17.2. 17.2 great profit points. That is just not on. I'm going to actually put the trading hub in this city. It's probably the last one I'm going to take because all of these are on the mainland and I can just attack with a horse rush. This one's a little bit more tricky to get to. So if that's the city you want to put the trading post in and then it doesn't go anywhere. Look, there we go. Look, trading post already established beautiful stuff now don't forget by the way siege units gain two movement when starting a turn adjacent to a light cavalry unit so what i can think about doing is i've got a thousand gold here now every time we're going to attack i can get a bunch of catapults and we can go for this what i want to do first though is spread my religion to china i think that's going to be very handy for me very handy for me indeed Oh, I've got these barbs like oh all of these mountain passes are just blocked by barbarians don't you know I'm trying to get through okay that barb encampment has found me quick archers horses back we're gonna go and deal with it otherwise everyone in the comments is going to say why didn't you deal with the barbarians so we're gonna have to go and do it aren't we Ugh. There we go. There is one more profit. And oh, do I? No, I'm not going to risk it. I'm just spending 900 gold to do it. That means that my capital no longer has to do holy site prayers. That in itself is a wonderful thing. Right. Uh, revelation will disappear by itself. So we can go. We don't have to worry about buying that off. So what we're going to do now is the very, very delicate and difficult task of going a oh, horse, a oh, horse, 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 horse. Like every turn, we're just going to be going horse, 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 horse. The beginning of the war 
It is afoot. It will happen. And we will enjoy. Oh, look how angry this prophet is. I'm quite glad I got the one I did. <laughs> Very angry. Okay, so holy sight. Done. Let's make a religion. I'm going to sort of put this as the desert that the horses live on. And my religion is basically going to be used to put crusade onto China. So we're going to call it United China. Feed the world. Beautiful. Crusade, where are you? There you are. Oh, yes. Okay, in the short term, both of my cities just got six extra food and four housing. Yes, 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 yes. In the slightly longer term, what we're now going to do is just uh, throw missionaries at China. I just want them to follow my religion everywhere. Everywhere. All of my faith right now is just going to go towards that. Once that's on it, we can relax. Um, equestrian orders? Oh, extra horses and iron. That would give me a lot to sell. But it's fine for now. We'll go maneuver. Perfect. This will produce more horse units for me. Do I need urban plan? I don't need harvest calendar anymore. I can get scripture instead. And urban planning, I think, is looking pretty good. Okay, that's, that's fine. We like this. So when I make my horses, I basically just press go over there and they will eventually go over there. I'm just going to treat my capital very briefly to a plus three campus. It takes three turns to do and then I can just build more horses after that. All the science I can get is a great, great thing. How many scientists? Somebody's getting 40 scientist points per turn. You know what? Sometimes you just have to go, sure, don't ask and the game won't lie. That encampment is completed. Lovely. Let's get me another or do. Mmm, yummy. And uh, yeah, horsemen in three turns. Thank you so much. Gilgamesh, 68 science per turn. Everyone's doing so well. This is going to be an absolute trial, this game. <laughs> but never mind. This barb encampment is pretty tough. Mmm, okay. I'm just going to leave my horsemen there. I might be able to lure them into attacking me a little bit. This is a good thing I'm bringing all these units back. Gandhi is pleased that you have been keeping the peace. Hmm. Yeah, don't get too attached to that idea, Gandhi. Don't get too attached to that idea. Just buy in a library in my capital. Lovely 35 signs. That's all okay. It's, it's all okay. Okay? All okay? <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, really. But that was the second horsey boy. Lovely. I'm alternating between buying horses and catapults. I, I mean, they're quite slow catapults. Might as well just buy them I think. So it's much easier that way although uh, saying that I could use a couple of regular units you know like boring units like swords but no no what am I talking about catapults. Focus Ursa. Focus on the goal. Don't do your usual thing of flicking between about three tactics and going oh I wonder why the game is running away from me. Oh by the way that was a golden age. We still got at least 24 turns but it's nice to have at least one. Oh hello that is a Chinese pikeman. Hmm, yum. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, it's even got the Spear of Fion. That is terrifying. Oh, my horses are going to be absolutely shredded by these pikemen. Okay, no matter. No matter. It's okay. Let's uh, start to spread a united China. This is like the propaganda that comes before the invasion. Phoenicia, honor to meet you. I could wait. Instead of meeting people, I could, I could save the era score for in a little bit. But let me, let me just tell you now, era score, era score is not going to matter. Like, at all. We're, we're going to be fine this game. They could be incredibly famous last words. But we're going to be doing a lot of domination this game. And yeah, I just feel like it's not going to be a problem. That is a catapult. Wait, oh, look at that. Four movement. Yeah. Oh, that's good. We're going to build this one. And I think if, if I run out of horses again, I'm going to actually start building mana arms. That could be really good antidote to fight the pikemen. I just don't like the fact they have such strong pikemen. Ugh. I mean, down the line, when I get my Kashyyyks, these are going to be amazing. But yeah, no, I just, ugh, I need, I need a short-term solution. Oh, a vendor at the trading post heard that China has just declared war on China. Oh no, the civil war is really kicking off now. Wouldn't that be a shame if there was a, I don't know, a Mongol horde that might take advantage of such a precarious situation? I mean, no, no, I'd, it's a ridiculous idea. Oh, well, what, why would that happen? Well, China definitely appears to be pretty distracted right now. How Would you pay me to join this war? One gold. I mean, this is probably a formal war. So you know what? I'm going to do it. Ah, let me just intervene on the side 
of a civil war. Th this seems like a fun thing to do. War declared between us. It doesn't actually say whether or not it was a formal war or not. We have to assume that it was probably a surprise war, given that the AI was a little bit suspicious about it all. So this means that the catapults can actually come in now. And again, with Crusade, oh, they're attacking at 51 strength because I have intel on opponents' movements of plus 6 and I've got Crusade of plus 10. My horses are also fighting at 55 strength. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, fine. What we need to look for is where the tile improvements are. There are no pillageable things that aren't just food in the immediate area around this city. So I believe it might be a good idea just to swoop in and steal this city like ASAP. We're just going to do that. Bam. In one turn, we, hit, we go bam. And this is ours. And this is, our, this is just the beginning of the invasion. Pe people may dislike that. They, they may dislike the grievances that we have just uh, passed on there. But, but it's okay. Let's just throw up ancient walls and see what we can do. I mean, no doubt there's going to be a vicious counterattack. Absolutely vicious counterattack. But uh, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Also, Giant's Causeway. This is something we want to keep an eye out for. Oh, yeah. There's the pikemen. Oh. Now, please. Can light cavalry have have a bit of strength that would be cool and let's go for united china i like that as a religion as well anti-cavalry got plus five you're kidding me oh look how many people went anti-cavalry that's not fun that's very anti mongo oh for goodness sake okay right these pikemen will yeah they they will pretty much one hit my horses that's not good <laughs> <laughs> That's not good at all. Okay, fine. We need to make sure that we fight within Chinese territory so that we get the crusade bonus. That, that's the main thing, um, but we also need to make sure that I don't leave my units too vulnerable. Look at this. Yep, I can move and attack just as I'd hoped. Perfect. Let's get these walls down ASAP. Oh, no, no, no. There's a pikeman. Oh, that's not good. Okay, I'm just going to give them a bit of flanking distraction and see if that helps, but that is not good. Oh yeah, this war is going to get very messy very quickly. Pillaging is going to be really important here. Really, really important. I'm tempted to say that raid is going to be more effective than maneuver, but I don't know that for certain. So we're just going to hold off on that judgment until I've worked that one out. Actually, the good thing is as long as I keep my horses on the wall of China, then I actually can do a lovely thing where they can't really attack me because I I've, I've count as being fortified. Where are your units going to come from? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You've only got 178 military strength. You're not that huge on army. Oh, they have courses though already that's no fun that's no fun at all i guess that i do have the ability to steal the units though that's quite a cool thing so there is a chance i could steal them oh yeah spear the spear of course i need to just remember the spear one attack two attack okay the walls are gone that's good that catapult can't move and fire because there's no horse next to it that's a bit annoying but actually, if I just plunge my horse into the sea to get the promotion... Oh yeah, no, okay, all of my units need that promotion quickly. And we can do 162 gold, which is quite a lot of gold on a pillage. I'm just so good at producing horses really quickly though, but I guess... Man at arms and catapults and stuff like that are probably just as effective here. Horses are only so powerful and the pikemen are shredding through them. So let's build... Yeah, you know what? I've kind of made my mind up already on that one. Let's view government. We'll unlock it. And instead of maneuver, I'm going to have raid in. Instead of urban planning, I'm going to go for natural philosophy. A bit more science per turn. Thank you so much. And as discussed before, I think as much as it's fun to hold this defensive position, I'm going to actually pillage for two bursts of that gold and then I can immediately buy a mana arms in and this thing can take on the pikemen. Yeah, that's that's a lot stronger. Okay, let's just rotate these units a little bit like that. That's got the spear and if I move you backwards temporarily, I can now move you to there and give... Oh, you're not going to be able to... Oh, you're stuck on that tile. Of course you are. Fine pull you back. I, I just need to make sure that all of my units have this spear improvement. It's it's too good. Just keep buying all the units with the three cash. Mmm. Oh, the city center only does six damage. That's really good. Until China gets the crouching dragon. That That is the big sort of like, you know, but on that comment. But we're still pillaging a lot every turn. Like, a lot. We're also moving our siege equipment over, which is nice. You know what? 
I think the government plaza would look good in my capital. I was thinking about it, and yeah, looks really good. What I'm doing is I've actually got a, a shuttle service of horsemen. I build catapults, and then the horses kind of like accompany them to the front line and sort of scoop them up at rapid pace. It's really fun. Oh, hello. Hello. That is a corsa that you've left in the sea. Why would you do that? Oh, that was a bad move. Oh, that's a, that is a strong unit for China, and I just absolutely obliterated it. Civil service. Oh, yeah. That's a good upgrade for me. China hasn't met anybody yet, which is a bit annoying, and I don't want to ally the other half of um, China. So, okay, it's not ultimately super useful for me, but divine right. Yeah, uh, I'd love chivalry. If I can get chivalry at the same time as everything else, oh, that would be good. But look, the catapults, they've arrived. Oh, you've actually got medieval walls up. That's fairly impressive, China. Well done. Oh, this pike, I'm just not, not happy about these pikemen just running around. This is really annoying. What I'm doing is I'm just leaving the city alive up until the point where I can take this city at the same time. Once I can do that, I feel like the loyalty will stabilize just a little bit more and I can hold both. It, it, it's, a, it's a vague hope, but it is a hope. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, I am Salty Tech, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Doughboy91, Seancrates, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalex, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Amiri C, Henry, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truand, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax. Thank you for all of your support. Cheers!